One fine summer morning, Alfie went out into the back garden to look around, and he found a stone. It was a specially nice sort of grey stone, worn, very smooth all over, with white streaks in it. It was rounded on one side and flattish on the other, and it fitted well into the palm of his hand. Alfie turned the stone over and over, and passed it from one hand to the other. Then he put it into the pocket of his shorts. He kept it there all day. Whenever he put his hand into his pocket, it felt comforting. By the end of the day, Alfie had decided that the stone had become a real friend, and he called it Bonting. Alfie liked Bonting a lot. He liked him almost as much as his blanket and his knitted elephant. Alfie's elephant was old, nearly as old as Alfie. But Mum said that Bonting was a lot older than that. He was very old, perhaps thousands and thousands of years. Alfie didn't know anybody as old as that. So it made Bonting even more special. Mum gave Alfie a box lined with cotton wool for Bonting to sleep in. He put it on the cupboard next to his bed. Alfie's elephant wore a scarf and a hat to match, which Grandma had knitted for him. He looked very smart in them. Alfie asked Mum if she would please make some clothes for Bonting too. Mum said that Bonting looked as though he might be a difficult shape to fit, but she would do her best. She and Alfie looked into the basket where Mum kept her snippets of stuff, and Alfie chose a bit with green and black stripes. Then Mum made a hat for Bonting and a scarf which tied round his middle. There was a bit of stuff left over, so she made him a bathing suit as well. The bathing suit was a good idea, because the weather was getting hot. Alfie and Annie Rose played in the back garden, splashing about in the paddling pool and sailing their toy boats. Bonting didn't float in the water. He sank straight down to the bottom and stayed there. When Dad came home, he said that if the weather stayed hot and sunny, they would get up very early and drive to the seaside. Alfie was very excited. He had seen the sea before. But that was a very long time ago, and he couldn't quite remember what it looked like. Mum got the picnic ready, and they packed up the towels and sun hats and bathing suit, and Alfie's armbands for swimming, and the buckets and spades, and put them in the car. Bonting came too, of course, inside Alfie's pocket. It was a long drive. Inside, the car got hotter and hotter. Annie Rose went to sleep. Alfie looked out of the window, hoping to see the sea. But all he could see were cars, lorries and motorbikes. At last they arrived. The sea was huge, almost as big as the sky. It stretched away and away, full of sparkling light. Far out there were big waves. Where the sea met the beach, it broke into little waves. They arched over one another, running up the sand and then out again, sucking seaweed and pebbles with them. Alfie stood and looked. He just couldn't stop looking. Of course, the first thing they did was to change into their bathing suits and run into the waves. Then they raced each other up the beach and at their picnic. Bonting had a little piece of Alfie's sandwich. After lunch, Alfie gave Bonting a swim in a pool and put him carefully to dry in the sun. Then Alfie dug a sand castle. Dad and Annie Rose helped and they threw a ball about. 
They collected shells and bits of frilly seaweed and looked at little fish and crabs hiding in pools and under the rocks. At last, when the tide had gone out, leaving miles and miles of shining sand, and Alfie's shadow was getting longer and longer, Mum and Dad started to pack up the towels and the picnic things and get ready to go home. Alfie and Annie Rose fetched their spades and buckets full of all the special things they had collected. Then Alfie felt in his pocket to check that Bunting was still there. But he wasn't. He remembered that he had put him out to dry after his swim, so he ran anxiously to the place where he had left him. But Bunting was nowhere to be seen. Alfie looked all around. There were stones everywhere, hundreds and hundreds of them, but not one was wearing a green and black striped bathing suit. Alfie began to be very upset. Of course, Mum and Dad started to look for Bonting. They hunted up and down the beach, turning over pebbles with their feet and peering into rock pools. Annie Rose hunted too but they couldn't find him. After a long search, Dad said that it was getting so late, way past Alfie and Annie Rose's bedtime, that they really had to start for home. But we can't leave Bonding behind, wailed Alfie. He'll be all lonely on the beach at night. Dad put his arm round Alfie and explained that Bonting wouldn't be lonely because he would have so many other stones to keep him company, so he wouldn't mind at all. All the same, Alfie cried all the way to the car park and part of the way home in the car. In the end, he was so tired that he fell asleep, and so did Annie Rose. It was very late when they arrived home. They hardly woke up when Mum and Dad carried them into the house and put them into bed. In the morning, the first thing Alfie saw when he woke up was Bonting's empty box, and he felt sad. After breakfast, he and Annie Rose went into the back garden, where Mum was hanging out the bathing suits and towels. Their buckets and spades were by the back door. Alfie began to sort through his bucket. He had collected some lovely shells and some nice stones. He lined them up in a row on the doorstep. But none of them was quite as nice as Bonting. Annie Rose's bucket was full of seaweed and muddy water. She picked it up and tipped out the whole lot onto the ground. There was a strong smell of seaside. Then Alfie and Annie Rose looked into the bottom of Annie Rose's bucket. And what do you think they saw? It was Bonting! His green and black bathing suit was all sopping wet and covered with mud. Alfie was very pleased to see him. Bonting will have to have a new bathing suit, he told Mum. Well, his next one had better be bright red, said Mum. Then he'll be easier to find if you decide to take him for another swim. Well, what a relief that was for Alfie to find his dear friend Bonting again. Alfie loved the seaside, and when he tried to remember it, this is what he imagined. The sea, the sea. Can you hear the sea? Big waves like green marble, rocking and swelling far away from land, small splashy waves coming in one upon another in long curving lines along the shore, rushing in among the rocks, filling up the pools where crabs and little fishes hide. Even when summer days are over and Alfie is snuggled down in his warm bed, he sometimes puts a seashell to his ear to hear the sea. Now, before I go, there is something very important to say. Tomorrow 
There are going to be hugs and kisses, cards in the post, balloons probably, a big cake with icing and candles, chocolate biscuits and crisps, ice cream and lots of presents. Alfie's friends are all coming tomorrow and they'll all have to be especially nice to him because it's going to be Alfie's birthday! Hooray! Can you see him? He's that boy in the striped shirt with the number five on him. He's got the number five because he is five years old. Hey, what's that little boy doing under the table? Hmm, I think he's hiding. Bye-bye.